How would I describe Clip Town? My, a school with great value, historical value. I, from the connection with the Freedom Charter, the mere fact that former President Mr. Mandela was here, the fact that we were the first school that included other races, we never reached that point where we can say, this is enough now. We want to do things, new things, every time, every time. And this is why I'm so grateful for this competition, because it opened doors for us. And, and, and as I've said, that it proved to ourselves and also to other learners that we can do things, make, make sure that we can do not just this, but more than this. Right, so the first thing that I would suggest, so you're talking about president for a day. The first thing that you need to decide is what is the purpose of your speech? There are wonderful things to talk about. So as much as you might be looking at some negatives, I think it's always good to inspire people to say, but we can do this, and you are the youth. So if you are all depressed, then we are definitely going to run under a bus afterwards. If you flop, don't beat yourself up. We move on. You understand? It's life. You know? We grow from that. You know, you take that lesson, and then next year you come back bigger and better. San Bonani, Dumelang, Afsheni, Dumacheroni, Dag, and good day to all honorable members of the House. Madam Speaker, Madam Deputy Speaker. Okay, can I start over? Ah, right. All right. right. San Bonani, Dumelang, Asheni, Dimacheroni, Dag, and good day to all honorable members of the House. This is the state of the nation's address. This is not. Uh, all right. Um, I <laughs> you need to practice more so that you know your cue cards. And also make sure that you know what is the last word on this cue card so that you can shift it. Are you with me? So that you don't sit with a cue card, it doesn't mean anything to you. Me representing the boys is like a huge opportunity for me to show that there are some boys in the school and in our community that are actually involved and that actually want to do these type of things. Out of 40,000 learners pregnant last year, 223 are from primary schools. I mean, think about it, 220 little girls having children of their own. When comparing the overall pass rate by gender, more males are completing the NSC examination than females, whereas more females were enrolling. I chose um, my topic based on the pregnancy of my best friend. Um, seeing a struggle now, um, seeing the way, like she's always there, she's always saying, you know what, I wish I could have done things differently. And there's a lot of people in South Africa and around the world that often put all the blame on teenage girls or whatever and portray them as the specific type of people when it's not actually that because when you see they struggle then you actually realize that no they they do acknowledge that uh, but yeah I just hope that our country can work together and uplift each and every one of these girls and sustain from sexual activity at a very young age. Xenophobia is an issue faced by most countries all over the world as recently seen in South Africa where communities were attacking black foreign nationals why is that? Is it because they are stealing their jobs? Do they feel inferior about them? My family, my whole family, grandmother, grandfather, uncle, everybody is excited, extremely excited. So I am going to be the first of the family to do public speaking. I want to thank the MRC. Essentially, it's a program of two schools um, where we're doing entrepreneurship and the development of young people. But I think what MRC recognized, if we want to cultivate and grow entrepreneurs, 
we also have to cultivate the spirit of asking questions and developing answers and being able to articulate those on platforms. And so in their wisdom, they believed that our public speaking program is a fantastic bedfellow of entrepreneurship. What I've noticed is the government now doesn't focus on what the people of South Africa need. There are millions of people starving and struggling out there. Just like any government servant, teachers will be required to wear uniform. Wearing uniform will make them feel familiar with each other. That's what a president is all about. Working to make your country better and improving the lives of people. It's so disappointing. I worked hard, I had sleepless nights. <laughs> I even have knots caused by stress in the back of my necks because this has stressed me out as if I'm the real president of this country. But next year I would come back better, stronger. <laughs> I'll give everyone a run for their money. Africa. We sing this song to celebrate our achievements, to remember our legacy, to commemorate the battles, and to honor those who are willing to risk their lives so that South Africa can become the diverse nation it is today. The economy of this country is the core of its welfare and the well-being of its people. And if I were president, I'd make sure that this is sustained. Out of 40,000 learner pregnancies each year, 223 come from primary schools. I mean, shocking, right? Can you imagine 223 little girls having children of their own? It's nice knowing that you can speak to an adult, you know, and just feel free and just talk and, you know, they'll listen to you for once in your life. They'll actually listen to what you have to say. And it's nice knowing that what you said could probably change someone else's life or it could, yeah, bring the change of tomorrow. It came a time where people were burned to death, shops being looted and burned down. Why was that? Because so they say, but you and Jim Sebens yet, they are stealing our jobs? Was that the cause of it? Do you ever think that they are trying to make a better living for themselves? The experience was wonderful because I met new people, made friends, and we had different opinions and learned how people interact with how they would address if they had to be a president. Yet, everyone can change. And that was Oscar Schindler showed us. He watched what was going on around him. He witnessed things that worried him. And what he decided to do was to put a list together of a thousand names, men, women, and children, and convince the Nazis that he needs to save a thousand people. He didn't say that to them. He didn't say, I'm going to save. No, 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 I'm going to create another factory and we're going to use them and we're going to create ammunition and weapons, but we're going to use those slave laborers. My father is on this list. He's on page 10 of the list and my uncle also was on that list. He saved my father's life because he took those 1,000 to a factory, did not allow the soldiers, the SS, to come into that factory. He looked after them. All his money, he used to buy food and feed them. And in the end of the war, he saved the lives of those thousand and even few more. It was so close and you were all so brilliant, but ultimately the winner, Mioba Chitibi. <laughs> I am a bit disappointed because I kind of feel like I did put a bit of hard work, but I am very happy for the winners. After hearing their speeches, yeah, they did actually deserve it. And it makes me work harder as a person. I'm actually not disappointed because I see that as people, we have different kinds of plans for each other. You know, God knows why this had to happen. And everything happens for a reason. So I believe that I didn't come out here as a loser, but I came out here as somebody who learned something. Today, I saw leaders and presidents here. I saw business leaders, entrepreneurs, and individuals who will take this country 
to greater heights. So, Mr. President, Madam President, let the light that is shining within you shine forever and never die. Thank you. Thank you.